Uh, let's continue with the English part. Uh, your world veneration, it is such a precious rarity that the, the, uh, the thus Adventist has been so very well mindfully, mindfully meaning from moment to moment, in each moment of the, uh, in the mind of the Buddha, each moment, he is protecting and empowering all the Pusas. Uh, so, uh, mindfully, with uh, all mind and in every moment, and have been so very well in trusting and instructing the Pusas. Uh, your world veneration, it is such a precious rarity. It is so precious and so rare, uh, preciously rare, that the thus Adventist, the Buddha, has, so, has been so well mindfully protecting the Pusas, has been so uh, put it in the mind from moment to moment to protect or empower the Pusas, and have been so very well in trusting and instructing the Pusas. In trusting meaning, uh, instruct, uh, meaning to tell and pass on the Buddha's vocation, to pass on the vocation of the Buddha or the will of the Buddha to the Pusas, which means tell them to succeed to this vocation. What's that? to deliver all the beings. So, to enlighten all the beings without exception and without condition. Okay, so, um, so there, there is no capitulation for the Buddha to deliver beings. You don't need to be a Hindu or an Indian to be qualified for the Buddha's enlightening because he will enlighten all people and equally. So, because the Buddha has just got the biggest mind, the biggest heart, the capacious, the most capacious mind without any just, uh, I mean, prejudice. So, uh, he does not just tell the Pusas to succeed to the Buddha's vow of delivering multi-beings, but also instruct them how to do it. Okay, but both these two parts are dif difficult, you know, you have to have the mind, uh, have the will to do it. And after you have gained the will, then you need the means, the method to do it. Otherwise, how are you going to accomplish it? How are you going to deal with it? You know. So in order to enlighten people, yourself, you yourself need to have wisdom, right? So wisdom is the tool. Wisdom uh, is the implement for you to deliver people, to enlighten people. So that's another way of saying that before you enlighten people, you yourself need to be enlightened, right? But uh, it's very uh, peculiar in, in this day that people are always talking about enlightening people. But is this person enlightened himself? Uh, we don't know for sure. 
Okay. So, uh, entrust, entrusting the pusa, meaning to aspire them for the deliverance of people. Uh, aspire them. And instructing, meaning teach them how to do it. So, and both these two ways, the Buddha are very good at it. Your world veneration for the virtuous men and virtuous women who have already generated the anuttara. This is a big word. Anuttara samyak sambodhi heart. How should they reside and how should they subjugate their minds? Okay. First of all, virtuous men and virtuous women when the Buddha said virtuous men or virtuous women, uh, it means, of course, good men and good women, but it is not just good, it's virtuous. But it is not just virtuous in the worldly meaning, in the worldly sense. You know, you can be virtuous uh, from the standard of Confucius, but you won't be good enough for Buddha. So, uh, and you could be virtuous and you don't do uh, wrong things, bad things, you, you don't hurt people, but in that sense you can be called virtuous, but in Buddhism it is more involved. Um, the qualification is higher for you to be called virtuous, you know. Uh, because this word, virtue, meaning you've got the virtue inside yourself and you can show your virtue to others so that you can cultivate people. You can teach people both verbally and bodily. Bodily meaning you behave yourself from your behavior, from your conduct and you are delivering uh, mute instructions or speechless instructions. And this is even more important. Because what? Because you are doing it yourself. You are making yourself an example. You are, you are making an example for people. So you, you don't just talk, you know. The verbal teaching is uh, comparatively easy, but the bodily speech, bodily speech is difficult because you need to follow it. In, you need to comply with the teaching and you, you really do it. You, not, you don't just talk, but this is just the point where Buddhism is different from all other religions or even philosophies, especially philosophies, because philosophies are always very good speculations, thinkings, but they are not very good for doing or working. You know why? Because the philosophers themselves themselves are not concerned with doing his own philosophies. For instance, Immanuel Kant, for instance, Schopenhauer, for instance, Nietzsche. Do they do their own philosophies? I guess not, because Schopenhauer, both Schopenhauer and Nietzsche went crazy, you know, and uh, Nietzsche even went blind, really blind. And because there is a um, cause and effect in there, causality, uh, he succumbed to causality because he taught people wrong themes, wrong things, you know. So misled people like a blind man, so he became blind. So it, 
if you see everything and see people in the light of Buddhism, then you you think it is so wonderfully uh, fitting in. You know, everything fits in. Everything can be explained, can be understood. Okay, so uh, virtuous meaning inner virtue and outer virtue, inward virtue and outward virtue. And the inner virtue is for yourself to entertain. You entertain the virtue and you feel blissful. You feel placid, you know, composed in the mind. You don't, uh, you are not subject to turbulences. Okay. And outwardly, you are dignified and you show the wisdom through your own conduct. And so people can be edified and uh, cultivated just by viewing you, just by seeing you. You know, they become awed. So, uh, 你如果自己内有德的话，那个德有内德外德，那内德是自己自受用，外德是秀给可以秀出来给别人看，但是不是故意秀的，它自然流露的，是吧？啊，那流露出来的那个德呢，外德啊，就可以感化众生。啊，所
or Christianity or Muslim. So not Jewish and not Christian and not Muslim. They are called heathen. Okay, and pagan is also the same. And so they are not, un, they are uncivilized. So the the undertone is that they are uncivilized. Uncivilized people are called pagan, like African people, you know, or Indian native Indian people, and the Western people will call them pagan, and or heathen or Gentile. They are very coarse and uncultured, uncivilized. Okay, um, so. Uh, Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi heart. So, uh, in, in English, you have these words, but, um, they all mean that people are classified and people are segregated, segregated by their beliefs and thinkings. But in Buddhism, they are not. The Buddha does not care what you believe now. He does care that from now on, if you accept Buddhism and practice wisdom, and that's important. But if you don't, then okay. He still accepts you. You know, he does not uh, have prejudice against you, and he he will, won't become intolerant toward you. In any way, and uh, what's Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, the supreme enlightening heart, which means the widest, the biggest heart that can incorporate all beings and wish to or have the will to deliver all beings, to enlighten all beings. Whatever it takes. And there is no condition. It is unconditioned. Okay. So, this kind of body heart is Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, the will to enlighten all beings. Uh, how should they reside? Okay. So, why is this important? You say, I'm learning Buddhism, or I, I'm a Buddhist. Then what is learning Buddhism? What are you practicing? And you say, oh, I practice, I read this sutra, that sutra, I make meditation, and I listen to lectures. That's a random. That's not it. The thing is that you need to have a systematic method because Buddhism is such a wonderfully methodological practice. It is very concerned about methods. So you don't grope, you don't grope around in practice like a man blindfolded. That's no good. So, because the reason why you practice Buddhism it is to be enlightened. And enlightenment, look at this word, enlighten, light. So, in is uh, the transitive verb, uh, transitive verb prefix, prefix. So, it means that put light in. Where? Put light in where? In your mind, in your heart. So put light in your heart. Make it light. Make it bright. Don't make it dark. And so you should be conscious. You should be conscious because you have the light to see. To see what? To see your own mind. To see your own heart to see your own feelings, your own knowledge, your own prejudices, and you, your own follies, and your own impurities, 
and be willing to correct them or cleanse them so that you can purify yourself. And after the rubbish are clean, cleansed away, then your mind is clean and bright, and so the radiance of the Buddha's wisdom can shine in. And so um, the chamber of your mind, your mental chamber will be enlightened and it becomes all light. It becomes all bright and you can perceive through everything, material or immaterial, or spiritual or, or otherwise. So you become a man of wisdom. So you won't be beguiled or cheated either by the world or by the world's inventions or by your own feelings or by your own inventions. Okay. Your, uh, the fix of your mind, you know, your imagination. You know. So this is what enlightenment is meant. So, uh, after the virtuous men and virtuous women who have already generated the body heart, so I was saying how you practice your Buddhism. First of all, we need to talk about method. So it's logical and it is scientific too, right? So you need to talk about method. You don't just go around. So the method is one. You need to set the goal. You need to set the goal. What do you want to learn? And where do you want to get? Where do you want to arrive? So if you set the goal or set your purpose very low, then you can only get to that low. Or even more often than not, you are getting lower. For instance, if you aim at high school, then at best, you can be a high school graduate. If you aim at college, then you, you can accomplish a college education. But sometimes not. But if you, even if you aim at a PhD, then we don't know. Maybe you can, maybe you cannot. But if you have the mind, have the goal, then it is good. And no matter how high the goal is, but you will strive, you will endeavor to get it, then it's good. Because uh, good ambition uh, is uh, commended in Buddhism. Okay, No matter if the goal is worldly or unworldly, because you are uh, trying to uplift yourself. So uh, either way is good. So, when, so first of all, if you want to be a Buddhist, or if you are a Buddhist and you are practicing Buddhism, then you don't close your mind and learn or study and learn from anyone or, or to read any books or any sutra that is recommended or not by others. Or you just get it from internet and study it and read it and very diligently and you call yourself a Buddhist. Yes, you are an, an internet Buddhist. A computer Buddhist. <laughs> a computerized Buddhist. Okay, so who is your master? Computer. <laughs> so, it seems that I can do without say, speaking Chinese, right? <laughs> you see? <laughs> uh, so, at the start, 
at the start, before you setting out for your journey of body questing, then you need to set the goal. And by setting the goal, meaning uh, you generated the heart, right? And why is it said generating the heart? It is also a term from Indian, from from Sanskrit. It is not uh, uh, Chinese at first, because the mind is like a generator. Okay, but the generator need uh, to uh, to be uh, started, right? Because the generator would not automatically produce electricity for you, right? You need to start it. So you need to put fuel in it and then turn it on, right? So this mind is like a generator. It does not automatically uh, generate something, Gen generate, especially generate the supreme body heart because it is so profound. Uh, it is not an automatic thing. It should be done consciously, mindfully. Okay, so not blindly. Okay, so you generate uh, your mind to make it uh, generate the heart for the uh, supreme body. And after these people have generated this mind or have set their goal for the highest body, then how should they reside? After they have set the goal, how should they reside? Reside meaning to stay unmoved in the Dharma. Okay. Reside meaning living. Res you become a resident, right? You become a resident in the Dharma. Okay. Because you have got the green card in the Dharma. So you have got the permanent residency uh, for the Dharma. So you can reside there. So, uh, and so you, you don't, uh, you are not itinerant, you know. You don't move from place to place, you know. And if, uh, you would live there um, um, because the Dharma becomes your house, your castle. So it, it's going to protect you. And you are going to enjoy living in there. And so it means, so to resign, meaning to practice by the Dharma or according to the Dharma. Because if you become a resident of somewhere, then you need to abide by the law of that country, right? So you become a resident of the Dharma, so you need to abide by the law of the Dharma. So um, that's a good resident or a good citizen of the Dhamma. So, and how should they subjugate their minds? Subjugate, subjugate meaning curb. To curb, to keep in control. Uh, and to purge, um, to purify their impurities. So subjugate your bad points, your impurities, to subdue your imp impurities. So these two sentences would mean after you have set the goal, have generated the heart or mind, then 
How should they practice? In other words, how should they practice? Uh, how to reside in the Dharma, meaning to practice by the Dharma, and how to subjugate their minds. So, these two questions are the most poignant thing, the most significant things in the whole practice of Buddhism. Why? Re reside or residence. You reside in the Dharma, which means you practice by the Dharma. And you subjugate your mind, meaning you incorporate the Dharma into your mind or heart. And to apply it to your heart or mind. Okay, so look at me, please. There are dharmas, but dharmas are external. So you practice by the dharma. That's meaning to reside in the dharma. Okay, and then second stage, subjugate the dharma. After practicing, you are very uh, good at the dharmas, and then you take the Dharma, you incorporate the Dharma into your mind. And so to apply all those Dharmas to yourself, to your mind, so it can improve your mind. So it is associated with your mind. But if you only do this one thing, the first thing to reside in the Dharma, then you are practicing externally. So there is no relationship or between you and the Dharma. Okay. But if you absorb the Dharma into your mind and make it effective in purging yourself, in subduing your bad points, then there is an association, there is a relation between you and the Dharma. And in effect, the Dharma is inside you. And you will become the Dharma itself manifested. Okay? So, you see, it is so important and so profound that you cannot see any commentary throughout the history. Maybe I'm the only one. It's true. Okay. If you don't believe me, then I'll bet one, one time for that. <laughs> and if you win, I'll give you one time. Okay, so these are the most important, important things. So just in these two questions, or these three questions, then all the most important points in Buddhism, or the most important themes in Buddhism, are outlined, right? Uh, to generate the mind, and then to practice by the Dharma, and then absorb the Dharma into yourself. So, and how to do it? This is the question. So, the Buddha is going to answer the question. Hopefully, we have time to answer that. Oh, before answer the questions, um, if you have any question at all, and I allow you uh, for some minutes, to ask and I'll answer it at my best. Any question? Oh, you You know, throughout the practice of Buddhism, the most melancholy thing is that you have question and you don't have anywhere to ask. Right? How can I talk to Buddha? Good question. Just talk to me. 
and or that's a joke, but when you read the sutra, you are talking to the Buddha. When when you uh, recite the names of the Buddha or the mantras, you are talking to the Buddha. Okay, but talking to the Buddha is good, is important, but that's outer Buddha. So it need you need to talk to inner Buddha. That's the real point that the Buddha is hinting at. Talk to your inner Buddha. 那怎么样 talk to your inner Buddha呢? 你用佛法, 我刚刚讲的, 你用佛法, 纳法于心, 然后把自己的心弄清净以后, 你就会看到你自己的佛性, 然后才能跟他讲话。因为你很想跟佛讲话，他就假装是吃佛，然后他说：“我就是观世音菩萨。”然后跟你讲话，那你 talk to her, talk to him, then you are dying. Okay, so practicing Buddhism is good, but don't be superstitious. Okay, remember, Buddhism is very realistic. It's highly realistic. It is not mysterious. So don't go the wrong way. Don't go to mystery. Don't, uh, don't court for supernatural things. Don't uh, go for supernatural powers. Believe them and admire them. And that will put you in the wrong track. 学佛很好但是不能迷信不能迷信所有的神奇的事情神意的事情神通之类所以老老实实实实在在的修行实实在在的念经实实在在的念佛那有听到什么看到什么那都是鬼影子这个达摩祖师说若着相及处处见鬼
So that's why Buddhism is valuable, is supreme, is why I have devoted my life to it. And I tell you, I'm not ashamed. I love it. Okay. On that account. Yes, sir? Everybody seems to practice or speak in a deep religion, right? Uh, practice what? Christians. Uh, all kinds of religions, yes. Yeah. They all think that they got the one. Yeah. Yeah. This religion is the only one that says we will be part of. Oh, okay. It can be verified very easily. Okay. For instance, some people are such um, uh, pan religious, you know, fun. Pan religious meaning that a lot of people think that all religions are good and they don't make any discriminations. Well, the, the, the undiscriminating mind is good, but a mind that is unperceiving is not so good. Actually, it's bad, you know, because. You know, all of us have eyes, right? But you have eyes that is clear and good, and you, you've got 2.0 on both eyes, then it's good eyes, right? And, but maybe you got 2.0 and 1.0 here, or, uh, um, or 0 0.5 here, then you are in trouble, right? And there are all kinds of eyes, nearsighted, farsighted, uh, or uh, cataracts, and and you see uh, all kinds of lights, uh, and um, with green, green eye or red eye, or a lot of eyes, right? So that's the same with the religions. All religions claim that they, are, they have got the best eye, even the clear variant, right? But it's not so. You know, a lot of religions are damaged in one eye or in both eyes, or a lot of religions are blind, you know, so. For instance, some people uh, who are Confucians say that Confucius is also a pusa. And even say, or Jesus is also a pusa. Well, um, that, that may be the broad, in the broadest sense, but it's too broad, you know. You, you, and you cross the boundary, and it's become blurred. So, you cannot, you cannot make one from the other, right? So there is no, no such a thing. For instance, by Pusa, by the name of Pusa, it means that he needs to take not just five precepts, but also the Pusa precepts. And the Pusa's precepts, uh, you uh, the first four or five, no killing, absolutely no killing, including insects, and no killing, and no stealing, and no uh, 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 illegal sex. Okay, but for uh, priests, no sex at all, right? Not even touching, touching with the hand, you know. Okay, so you cannot, or I cannot walk hand in hand w with my student here. And that would be outrageous to all people, of course, including her husband. 
Okay. And if and we cannot hug, you know. So there is absolutely no body contact. So why? Because any contact of the body can develop and it's going to have some effect or influence in your mind. And and it even can uh, elicit imaginations or even if it is untold, you know, secretly or a secret desire, you know. So the Buddha is so wonderful that he put all prevention over everything. So if you want to uh, take and practice um, the precept of no uh, illegal sex, then it is thorough, you know. So you cannot uh, commit anything in that light. And no inappropriate sex, girlfriends and boyfriends cannot go to bed, you know, because they are not legally married. So it's bad for the parent and maybe for the babies to born to be born, you know. Uh premarital and sex and no lies prevarications, any lies, including white lies, because in the light of the Buddha, no lies are white. All lies are black. So, no pretext, no excuse for telling any lie, even in joking. So, it's so thoroughgoing, so it is so difficult. And um, and also in paper, you cannot tell lies with writing either. And no lies and uh, no alcoholic drinkings. Of course, in uh, nowadays it would include all kinds of drugs and tobacco too. You know, if I smoke. then all my parishioners will go into smoke, vanish into the thin air. <laughs> Don't know what I mean. If I smoke, my faith will be gone, right? So it is so, so thorough and so strict. Now let's examine. If, and of course, if you are a priest, then you cannot do the worldly business. Okay, it should be strictly Buddhist. Uh, Buddhist. All right. So you cannot invest, and you cannot um, do anything with uh, the making of the money in the worldly way. So, let's examine. If Confucius is a pusa, then or also pusa does not eat meat. He is thoroughly vegetarian, because you want to deliver multi beings, you cannot eat their meat, their flesh, right? So you don't you don't do that. Does Confucius eat meat? Of course. Does he drink? Yes. And does he follow any nut killing? No. Because at his time, there are a lot of sacrificing with beasts, with animals. And he even uh, compiled and, and um, led the ceremony of Sacrifice. Okay, she sang ah, and uh, so 
Confucius uh, it is far under the level of Pusa in our examination. How about, I'm sorry to say here, how about Jesus? It's almost the same, right? He, eat, he eats meats. He eats the flesh of multi-beings. He drinks, you know. So, and there are some other things. And uh, I'm not inclined to talk about here right now. So, to be a pusa uh, is not so easy. But, you know, nowadays people think practicing Buddhism is easy. And they make it easy. And they intend it and try very hard to make it easy. And I'll tell you, Buddhism is no easy thing. Because, please turn to the uh, second page. The Sutra opening Gata. The supreme, supremely profound, wondrously sophisticated Dharma. So, the Buddha's Dharma is supposed to be supremely profound. It's very, very deep, wondrously sophisticated. It's so sophisticated, so subtle, so exquisite, that it is so marvelous, right? So, what is Fofa? Fofa is Wu Sang Seng Sen Wei Miao Fa. That if it is a simple, easy Fa, that is not Wu Sang Seng Sen, that is not Fofa. That can be said to be Fofa's beginning or Fofa's beginning, the beginner. Buddhism or elementary Buddhism, you know, elementary Buddhism deals with a lot of things or a lot of activities, you know, parties, campings, singings, um, collecting money, uh, and such things, but. These all have nothing to do with the supreme, profound, wondrous, sophisticated Dharma. Because the Dharma is for your heart, for your mind, for your, uh, for your um, liberation from transmigration or reincarnation. So, um, so it's not easy. It's, it's got to be profound and difficult. So only the people with the first class mind and heart are eligible for practicing this Dharma. So, uh, I am, um, I'm not flattering you, but it says in the sutra that you people here, if you are able to hear, if you have a chance to hear this Dharma, then you have already practiced eons and eons of ages. So that you have got this opportunity to hear and you will stay to hear it and hear it out and believe it and take it to heart. So you've got very good, the so-called good root, you know. So you, you 能够今生能够听到这个法呢，是无量世来已经修了不少的善根。在经里面讲说，不只是一佛、二佛、三世、五佛种诸善根，在无量诸佛所种的善根。所以你们，我不是在，不是在捧你们，是在轰你们呢、啊。是经上就这么写，哎，你们都是很有善根的人啊。虽然有时候也笨了一点啦、啊。啊，但是没有关系，哎，有时候小小一点笨哈，我只要原谅你就好了啊。啊，虽然有时候也很气了，对不对？<笑>所以你每一个这经上讲的每一个都已经这种了善根，而且是
很有，就是说修行了很久的人，才有这样子的福德跟智慧来接受跟理解这个经。So you've got the mind and capacity to receive and absorb this dharma. It's not an easy thing, you know. For instance, at least you need to sit there quietly for two hours. That's not a very easy thing for nowadays. Nowadays we want to go like this, right?、Uh, or so. This is、uh, exclus- exclusively for a mind that is aimed at liberation, at enlightenment, and you have the will to do it. So that's the drive that take you here. Okay. So、uh, we are right at page six.、Uh, virtuous men and virtuous women who have already generated the Anuttara Samyak Sampodhi heart about Confucius. What heart has he generated? He has generated the heart that he would like to have a job in the government. And after he was deposed as a prime minister in a in a certain state, Lu, Lu state, which is Shandong nowadays, and he was out of work. And so he traveled all around the country to look for a job. Maybe his resume did not reach very far, <laughs> so he failed to get a job. And he even he even was mistaken、uh, as a, a bad guy, and he was surrounded、uh, and was going to be killed by certain people. For three months, and he was not just out of work, but out of food, you know. And he he's got、uh, about one hundred students together. So、uh, we we did not know how they got by, but they were hungry. That's for sure. <laughs>、uh, but at last,、um, the siege was l- lifted, and so he went home. Crestfallen, crestfallen, 知道吗 ？Crest 就是攻击的那个那个机关呐、啊。然后攻击如果要打仗的时候，这个那个机关就竖起来，对不对？那如果打败了，他就啊、呃，对，那那 Crest 就 fallen， 哎，所以就回去就呃编这个编那个诗书啊，然后写春秋啊。Okay, so he went back to write books <laughs> and teach students. But he make a request that、um, if he said in in his、uh, a book says that if anyone who will present、um, dry meat、uh, beef dry beef meat to me. Uh, a bundle of dried meat to me, then I, I will teach him. <laughs> I'll take him as my student. So you've got to pay the tuition with a bundle of beef. <laughs> so that's very interesting. Uh, so. Uh, Confucius is far from、uh, a Buddhist priest, you know.、Um, okay, the virtuous men and virtuous women who have already generated the Anuttara Samyak Sampodhi heart. So Confucius also has generated a heart, but that heart is for a job, a government job heart. <laughs> okay. Uh, should reside in this wise. Should reside, stay unmoved 
meaning reside. You don't move from place to place, okay? And you stay unmoved in this way, in this way, and should subjugate their minds in this way, and they should uh, subjugate, uh, subdue their own minds in this way. What is meant by this way? So this, these two sentences of the Buddha has, have perplexed lots of people throughout ages. What is this way? Okay. Look here. They should reside in this way. Okay. And they should subjugate their minds in this way. What way? The way that I have just manifested. By put on the robes, taking the bow, uh, and to beg for arms in the city, and then come back and eat, and then wash the bow and my, and the, and my feet, and put on the meditation mat by myself, and then sit on meditation. So, I do it practically, realistically, okay? So what is prashna? What is wisdom? Wisdom is in the doing, in the doing, in my way. I do it. I, not, I don't just talk it, you know? So it's not words that matter. It's working, okay? It's doing. So it should do all these things in this way. The Buddha has shows you, has exhibited it to you this way. Okay. So of course this is kind of inimical, like a riddle, right? Inimical. Because people might not understand this. So uh, the Buddha Go on, explain this in the next portion. Okay. 下面大圣正中分。Uh, I'll go very quickly. 大圣正中，啊，就是什么？是大圣最重要的主旨，就大圣正中，最正的宗旨，讲的啊，所以。现在有很多人讲说我是修大圣的，你修什么大圣？对，啊，那我现在告诉你，这个大圣正宗是在这里，《金刚经》讲的，不是我讲的啊。所以你你不是说啊，你这个只要念念经啊，然后拜拜佛啊，然后做做一些什么佛事就是大圣了，哎，没那么容易啊。OK， 佛告须菩提，诸菩萨摩诃萨应如是降服其心，所有一切以。众生之类，若软生，若胎生，若湿生，若化生，若有色，若无色，若有想，若无想，若非有想，非无想，我皆令入无余涅槃而灭度之。如是灭度无量无数无边众生，实无众生得灭度者。何以故？菩须菩提，若菩萨有我相、人相、众生相、寿者相，即非菩萨。OK， 太棒了啊！太棒是我说的了，那你现在还不知道是怎么怎么回事对不对？菩萨摩诃萨 ，OK， 来了。诸菩萨摩诃萨应如是降服其心。你看看前面是讲善男子善女人，对不对？但是现在怎么怎么佛变成说菩萨摩诃萨呢？那我告诉你，因为前面的善男子善女人是发了无上菩提心，发了无上菩提心就马上就转身为菩萨摩诃萨。什么叫菩萨摩诃萨？就是大菩萨了，摩诃就是大的意思了啊。好。众生一发大菩提心，马上就转身，变成转变他的身了、啊，变成菩萨摩诃萨，变成大菩萨了。所以佛就称他为称他们为菩萨摩诃萨。这诸就是很多了，很多就是这些这些菩大菩萨们呢、啊，应该要这样子降服其心，降服其其什么是他得的意思，降服他们的心，怎么样降服呢？打这个两点有没有？就这样子降服。所有一切众生之类，一切众生，把所有就去掉也没关系，挂糊起来。一切众生啊，不管是哪一类的
卵生的啊，譬如说是鸟啊、乌龟啊等等，这是卵生的；胎生的这个这个呃，胎生动物、哺乳类动物啊，啊，胎生。然后湿生呢，像蚊子啊、孑孓啊，就是湿生的啊，这是很 miraculous， 你知道吧？哎 ，miraculous， 那个蚊子，蚊子从哪里生的？蚊子是从脏水里面生出来的，哎，化生的啊，所以它是变化出来的。不不，对不起，私生的了，对不起，私生啊。然后化生，那化生像什么蝌蚪啊、鹅啊，对，哈、哦，这个，呃，然后蟋蟀啊，他们都是化生的啊、哦。然后这个若有，所以，呃，若有色，有色就是有色界，这是天界了啊、哦。无色无色界也是天界，更高的天。若有想，若无想，有想是有想天，无想是无想天啊、哦。那这个。有想天是三禅天，无想天是四禅天。若非有想，非无想，那这个是什么？这个也是天界，这个是非有想，非无想。另外的经里面就称为非想非非想天，非想非非想天就是色无色界最高天啊，无色界最高天啊。所以呃，我们再从头看一下这个卵生四生。呃，卵生、胎生、四生、化生，这就是什么欲界的众生，啊，然后这个有色无色，这个有色无色，有想无想，呃，非想非非想，这就是天界的人，天界的众生，不管是欲界众生，或是天界众生啊，或是色界无色界众生啊，我皆令入无余涅槃而灭度之，我都度他们，度他们到无余涅槃，也就是说不再轮回了。这样子嘛，不再轮回生死，也就正了正道，就不再轮回了，出轮回，啊，一切的众生，即使是蚊子啊，即使苍蝇啊等等啊，我都没有分别的，度他入涅槃，度他不再轮回生死，因为生死轮回很苦嘛，很痛苦，对不对？痛苦不痛苦？痛苦啊！为什么？举一个例子吗？好，你现在有个 job， 然后被 lay off 了。然后又找到 job， 又被 lay off 了，这是不是轮回？轮回啊，对。然后你结婚了、啊，今天跟你太太吵一吵，明天又和好，后天又吵，然后又又又又又又两个绷着脸三天，然后又好了，好了又再吵，这这是什么？很苦吗？是吗？轮回嘛，是不是？你的孩子不听话，今天很听话，你很高兴，哇，好乖好乖。那明天不听话，我气死了。然后就是就这样子，然后后天又听又又不听话了，然后。这就是轮回，对吧？这轮回不一定要死了以后才轮回啊！你天天都在轮回，你今天很 high spirited， 然后明天又很 low， 碰到一些事情又很 low， 而且不一定要碰到事情。有时候，有时候没事你就觉得很 low 啊，是不是啊、哦？好，那你这个心情高高低低啊，这是什么轮回嘛？很苦啊，是不是啊？好，所以这个大菩萨就要可以度你。这一切友情啊，都令他入涅槃而不再轮回，啊，出一切苦，这样的。哎，这个如是灭度无量无数无边众生，十无众生得灭度者。我这样子度了无量的众生以后，实在没有一个众生是我度的。什么意思？你应该加一句话：实在，我实在自觉。没有一个众生是我度的，为什么？因为我不觉得他们是我度的。为什么？因为我只是教他们法门，而他们自己去修行，然后他们得度，所以我不 take the credit， 我不沾功，我不抢功，我不鞠躬，这样懂吗 ？OK， 所以为什么无我？有我就一定鞠躬，有我一定要把自己的功劳夸得很大，对不对？啊，好，何以故？须菩提，若菩萨有我相、人相、众生相、寿者相，即非菩萨。如什么是我相？就是有我啦。啊，如果菩萨有我相，我相什么？我能度众生，这就我相。我能做什么？我能写信，我能写书，我能打球，我能赚钱，我能养家。这叫我，就是我能，这就是我相，啊。我能做好事，我能修行，我能修佛法，那么这叫做我，我就是我能啊、哦。
。那这就是我相。那这个我相就是 subject 啊，所以你是 subjective。subjective 是什么意思呢？就是 ego， 就 egoistic， 那就是我相。所以这个我相呢，就是一切众生痛苦。轮回生死的主因，因为你有一个我，你觉得你自己有一个我，而这个你既然觉得有我呢，就会觉得自己很了不起，很伟大，所以就傲慢。所以，更何况你灭度无量众生，那你就更不得了了，那就跟耶和华一样了，你懂吗？嗯，好，所以所以你就会 play the god， 你知道吧？啊，然后因为有我像我是 subject， 然后人像人就是 object。我是能度，能度者，那么人呢？他人就是单数的他，他是我所度的，所以他是所啊。我是能度，能度的人啊 ，deliverer， 他是所度，他是被我度的，所以我所度啊。那么我所度呢？他就变成我所，这个所者拥有，他就变成我拥有的，因为他被我度的嘛。对，懂吗？所以变成我拥有的东西，啊，好，所以这我是我相，这个我所是人相、众生相，两个都是，因为人相是单数的被度的人，然后众生相是多数的被度的，你度了很多的就是众生相啊，然后受者相呢，是，我跟人众生都有受者，都有寿命啊，然后。你这个着这个寿命的相，叫做受者相，哎，贪着寿命这样的，啊，寿命是什么？寿命是一切福报的精华。有福报的人寿命长，那福报最差的人就是短命，就是早死，就是夭死，对不对？那就是最没有福报的，是不是？即使你身为太子，你如果早死的话，那有什么福报？这样懂吗？啊、哦、，OK。所以，如果你有我相，觉得说我能度众生，然后他是我度，你是我度，你是我度，我是度你们的啊、哦。然后这个，然后呃，然后这个受者相，那你就不是菩萨。因为什么？因为你有我执、我见、我爱、我慢，这样的。所以是什么？什么是我相呢？所以你看，啊，你看《金刚经》看了这么久，哪一部《金刚经》解释里面有讲这个、啊？什么叫我相啊？所以是什么是我相？我相就是这个，我执我见我爱我慢，这个就是什么？这个就是我们呼呼应一下，唯识学第七世，我执中心啊。那所现的是什么？就是我执我见我爱我慢，那你就不是菩萨，你就是个大凡夫。所以有我执我见我爱我慢，所以即非菩萨。OK， 所以你要是大菩萨，你要是菩萨，那你就不能找我，不能有我相，不能执着我，以无我无私的心去度众生。哇，你看看，怎么去做啊？没无我无私，怎么做呢？哎，那，哎，菩萨那么好做啊？对，所以，所以不要说，哎，你看台湾也很流行啊，叫每个人都叫菩萨，哎，菩萨，菩萨，嗯，哎，菩萨啥，哎，哎，所以菩萨是没有我知我见我爱我慢的人，啊，没有我知我见我爱我慢而发心，而且去做度一切众生的工作，继承佛智，称为菩萨。OK， 啊 ，OK， now English part. <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep you waiting. Segment three: the primal principium of Mahayana. Mahayana is a very broad thing, but there are some first principles. Primal principium is first principles, and. The Buddha imparted to Subhuti. The Buddha uh, spoke to Subhuti. The Pusa Mahasattva, Pusa Mahasattva, should thus 
subjugate their minds. Okay, uh, all the genesis of multi beings, such as the egg begotten, the womb begotten, the moisture begotten, or the transformation begotten, or the material or ma- immaterial beings. Con- the conceiving or non-conceiving beings, the unconceiving or non-unconceiving beings, all and sundry of these beings, I will salvage by delivering them into the unrenant nirvana. Okay, let's go back. The Pusa said, uh, the, Bu- the Buddha said, the Pusa Mahasattva, you remember, at first, uh, the the Buddha refers to those people as uh, virtuous men and virtuous women, right? Uh, who have generated the uh, supreme body heart. But now he is referring them as uh, Pusa Mahasattva. Pusa Mahasattva means great Pusa. Okay, not just general Pusa, but great Pusa. Big, why? Why he changed or altered the term? Because when people, when good people have generated the supreme body heart, they automatically, they are automatically transferred into great Pusa because of their commitment. They have commit, committed themselves to uh, the pursuit of supreme body. So they are entitled to uh, the term of, or the name of Great Pusa. Okay. So their status has been changed uh, just by virtue of their generating, generating the great heart. Okay. Because why is this important? So important. Because in this enterprise of pursuing a supreme body, you need to set the goal consciously and so that you can aim at the goal and gather all the methods to do it. So if you have set a goal, then what? You are enrolled. You know, you are enrolled in the sphere of higher Buddhism. You become a higher being in Buddhism because you have generated a superior mind, which is... uh, far superior than ordinary people. Because ordinary people, although they have uh, worked very hard every day, from day to day, but most of their endeavors are for themselves, for the benefit of themselves. They just want to benefit themselves, or at best, their family, but not otherwise. So, but a pusa or a great pusa is devoted to benefiting all people who have no relation with him personally at all. And he does not expect or covet any, anything in return. So that's why he is great. He is called Great Pusa. He is supreme because he is courting for the supreme body in this attitude, in this mentality. So what is mentality important? You know, people are different just because of their thinking. In a particular thinking, you become some kind of people. Or thinking or believing. If you think in the uh, imperialist way, then you become an imperialist. 
If you think in the communist way, then you become a communist, right? If you believe in、uh, a Christian way, then you become a Christian. If you if you、uh, think in in terms or in the way of Buddhists, then you are a Buddhist. So, what makes people different are thinkings. This is、uh, said in the sutra. So, why are people different? Because their thinkings are different. Because the thinking is the driving force of people's、uh, working or、uh, employments. So, the thinking determines their personality and their karma. So it's important in this way. So the Pusa Mahasatwa, the great Pusa, because his thinking has has turned into the Buddha's way, and、uh, he is、uh, looking towards the Buddha as an example or as an exemplar, and. He wants to、uh, follow it, so he becomes a great pusa、uh, in the pursuit of、uh, the supreme body. So, all those good people, good men, and good women who have generated the supreme body heart have become the great pusa. And in this case, how should they practice? They should subjugate their own minds in this way. Thus, in this way, in what way? In this way, all the genesis of multi beings means all species of beings. Multi beings is a term in、uh, in Buddhism, zhong sheng, and it's usually translated conventionally,、uh, hitherto translated as sentient. Beings, but I I dislike this term because it's not correct and it's vague. Because in the original term, multi beings meaning beings who are succumb to reincarnation, so they go through a lot of rebirth and death. So that's multi. Being. So、uh, I translate it directly from Chinese into English. So multi beings doesn't mean a lot of people or a lot of creatures. It means even one one creature or one being. Each of them has already subjected to numerous. Or in numerous lives and deaths, which is mean he is a multi being, or she is a multi being. So multi being is not、uh, people in the plural. Okay, it denotes the lives and deaths in one person or in one being. Okay. So of course, multi being can be multi beings, which means a lot of people who have undergone the same thing. We have undergone、uh, a lot of lives and deaths, which means a lot of sufferings. So、uh, all the multi beings, all the species of multi beings. You see, this is where. The capacity, the broadness of the Buddha's mind comes in. All genesis, all species of multi beings. The the object of deliverance for the Buddha is not just people.、Um, far less than the elected few, right? There are no elected few. 选民啊，上帝的选民。There are no elected few for the Buddha. All beings 
are his objects. All beings are equal. And all beings are, mind you, precious. All beings are equal and precious. Why? Because all beings are endowed with a Buddha nature. So the Buddha cherishes, cherishes all beings on account of their Buddha nature. So the Buddha does not see people as people, see animals as animals. When the Buddha see, sees a person, he sees his Buddha nature. He aims at his Buddha nature. When a Buddha, when the Buddha sees an animal, he does not see an animal. He does not, he sees the Buddha nature in this animal. So he wants to deliver this Buddha nature out of the form of the animal, of the pig or dog. You know, that's the Buddha nature is what he values and that is what he actually perceives with his sight, with his uh, perception, wisdom. You know, but we as ordinary people, we cannot perceive the Buddha nature in, in other people. Well, we don't even perceive the Buddha nature in ourselves, right? If we do perceive the Buddha nature, then right away we become Buddhas. So, 见性成佛道, 见佛性成佛道. So, if you perceive your Buddha nature, then you become a Buddha. And that's the purpose of the Buddha. That's the sole purpose, the only purpose that the Buddha takes pains to come to this world, to manifest as being born and uh, practice asceticism uh, for 12 years and then become enlightened and then to preach. That is just to show people the wisdom, to liberate oneself and everybody else. So this is the greatness of Buddhism. So there is no comparison throughout the world. Nobody can be compared because at the, the outset, there is no justice. There is no uh, uh, prejudice. I mean, there's no prejudice uh, in him. And, there, and he has no justice uh, to set forth because justice is in uh, the law of cause and effect in karma. Okay. So uh, the great Pusa should thus subdue their own minds that you should liberate all the, all the species of beings or multi-beings such as egg begotten like birds, fowls, turtles, and the womb begotten like mammals and the moisture begotten like insects or mosquitoes and or the transformation begotten um, like silkworms or cicadas, moths, they, they transform. Okay, and the material and immaterial beings, this referred to uh, invis visible or invisible celestial beings, okay, uh, the heavenly beings, the conceiving or non-conceiving beings, uh, the beings that uh, think or do not think, um, the unconceiving or non-unconceiving beings, these are all celestial beings of higher class, okay. Um, all and sundry of these beings, I will salvage, I will save, deliver, by delivering them into the unremnant nirvana, which means that's the ultimate 
nirvana, and they were not going to suffer from reincarnation uh, anymore. After having thus salvaged infinite myriad innumerable multi beings, you see. Uh, Uh, the Buddha puts so many adjectives here just to uh, emphasize there are so many, you know. After you have delivered so many people, so many multi beings, in reality, to yourself, okay, to yourself, you, you should put in this, these two words, to yourself, in reality. There are no multi beings that have ever been salvaged. Although you have actually saved so many beings, but you don't think that you save beings. You are the savior of beings. Not just the world, you know. If you conceive yourself as the savior of the world, that's great. But here it is not just the world. It's the universe. You are the savior of the universe. Even if you have, if you, even if you are really the savior of the universe, but you don't think in this way. You don't deem yourself this way. You don't consider yourself as a savior. Why? Because if you conceive yourself, consider yourself as a savior, then you have a self. You have an ego, and the ego is gigantic, colossal, right? So colossal that it can cover all the universe, right? And all the universe would become yours, you know, because all the universe is saved by you. So you can rightly claim that you own the universe. Why? Because in the past, traditionally, in the East or in the West, when somebody is saved by someone, then the one saved would say, I owe you my life. So my life is yours. So I, will, I'm be, I become your slave. And we, willingly, and I will work for you. Do whatever thing you told me because I'm your slave. Because you saved me. And I own this life to you. So without you, I will have no life anymore. So this life is yours. So that's logical, right? But that's a conviction or a belief. But in Buddhism, you cannot think in this way. Even if you save a person, you don't own this person. His life is not owned by you, you know. And it, of course, you are not a creator of his new life, you know. So uh, you don't think you are a creator of his new life or the owner of his life. Otherwise, you will have still have ego. You are egoistic, and you work for your own interest. So you are self-interest, egoistic. So you are not a pusa. Pusa is supposed to be egoless, and self-interested. So uh, the next, next line, uh, turn the page, page eight. We are going to the nirvana. Um, wherefore is it so? Why is it so? Subhuti, for the pusa first, if the pusa fosters uh, ego appearance or the alter appearance or the multi being appearance or the lifespan appearance, he would not be entitled to a pusa in truth. Okay. If you say, I can save people, I save people, then there is an I, right? I is ego. Ego, the, the I is the, I is ego. I, the savior, the doer, the 
emancipator. Okay, author is him or her. Uh, is saved is one who is saved. Okay, received the uh, the salvage. Multi being is plural. This is singular. Okay, and the multi beings are saved. So I is sub subject. Alter and multi being are object. Okay, so. I am the mover. These are the moved. I'm like the God. You know, I'm not playing God. I'm God. Because I'm Pusa. I save people. I save the world. I save the universe. So I kind of own them. I'm magnificent. So your ego is this big, gigantic, colossal, immense, right? So, so this, you, you are not an ordinary person anymore, you know, but you are not a pusa either, because you have the idea, the thinking, the conception that you can do something and you take the credit, and you claim the credit, you know, like the Christian God, you know. What is the difference between God and Buddha? Buddha does not claim credit, does not court for credit, does not require credits. So when he benefits people, then it's for free. You know, we like that. Okay, and so there is absolutely no charge, and you don't need to pay anything back to him. Not even he does not require your glorification, your worship. You know, you need you don't need to call him Lord, because if you call the Buddha Lord, then you become servant, right? That. But the Buddha dislikes it. He detests it. He, don't, he doesn't want you to be his servant. He wants you to be his equal, as the essence is. You know, because you've got the same Buddha nature. Why, does you, why do you condescend or lower yourself, de degrade yourself into a servant and to become so servile? So, you are no good. You are not a good Buddhist. You know, all Buddhists should aim at Buddhahood, to become Buddha, to become master of themselves, to become lord of themselves. And there are no other lord externally. You know, so actually. The Buddha does not see there is any law at all because all beings are equal. All things are equal. So he's got so huge and expensive mind, you know, seeing everything's equal. That's why his kindness, his mercy is really unlimited, borderless. So, Manzai, <laughs> Manzai Buddha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so if you conceive things in this light, then you, if you think in this light, even if you have accomplished so much, uh, then you are still not a pusa. Although you have generated the mind and do the lib liberation of multi-beings and throughout so many years and, and, and liberating so many people, but you are still not 
a pusa. You know why? This is also comes around to the center of Buddhism. The center of Buddhism is that your mentality, the way you think, the attitude you take in doing things. It does not matter it is a great thing or a little thing, but it does matter if you do it in a certain attitude. So attitude is the most important thing. So Bus Okay. Does that put a light into you? If yes, give us a clap. <laughs> so I'll see you next time. So you see, I have prepared up to here. So I have uh, su succeeded uh, in doing it and with your patience and hope. And thank you ever so much. Uh, make a dedication. I wish that the Buddha would be with us. Uh, 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 to the enlightenment expeditiously for myself and all beings. Amitabha Buddha. <laughs>